landscape add-on. It's like an old friend. It was written by Jimmy Hayesvoit, and it's been with Blender as a standard function, it seems like, forever. When you get into it, there's all sorts of features. There's, you can adjust the resolution, you can add strata, you can adjust the fall-off, you can add effects like rocks or lunar craters or cracks or tech. Using the erosion module, uh, written by Mikael Anders and a little bit by myself, you can erode the landscape and generate masks for materials. You can displace the surface of the landscape or even generate a planet. So it's a great add-on, but I've found there's often a bit of work to do to make it an asset for your movie or your game. You typically have to build a high-resolution model, a low-resolution model, normal bake, convert vertex weights into textures. It takes a bit of time. I thought, wouldn't it be great if this add-on just, instead of making geometry and vertex weights, just directly made textures like height map, normal map, and erosion masks? And because this is Blender and open source, you don't have to wait for a developer, you can just have a go at doing it yourself. What could go wrong? Here's a quick rundown if you'd like to see where I'm up to. You can download the zip file from the link in the video description if you'd like and install it in the usual Blender way, that is through preferences, add-ons and the install button, and then enable TXA Landscape. So now on the add menu, there's a TXA landscape option. And what do you know? You get a landscape that actually looks pretty similar to the ant landscape. So what's different about it? Well, there's actually no geometry on this one. The height is generated by the subdivision modifier and the displace modifier. The displace modifier uses a height map generated by the add-on. The add-on also generates a normal map and a simple procedural material which uses the normal map and lets you see greater detail in the, in the model. On the left-hand side we have the redo panel similar to the ant landscape add-on. Uh, most of the options are currently functional, uh, although we've still got a bit of work to do on some of them. So we can change, for example, the noise type to uh, all the various different types of noise, including the sub-noise modifier. We can change the dimensions of the landscape. And slightly different to the original, uh, instead of subdivisions, we can specify the texture resolution. So um, if we choose, let's say, 256 by 256 as a resolution, well, that's the size of the height map and the normal map that will be generated. Note that you can adjust the amount of actual geometry uh, by adjusting the resolution settings in the subdivision modifier. You can add or subtract uh, up to the point where the height map resolution is. Of course, if you use the normal map on the procedural material, then uh, you don't notice so much difference. OK, let's go back to the original landscape. Once you make any changes to the landscape, the redo panel disappears. You can then go to the side panel. The original Ant landscape add-on, its panels all live under the Create tab, which is where they should live, but I've kept the TXA landscape ones under their own uh, panel just to avoid confusion with the original. Uh, if you want to adjust the main size or texture resolution, that's found under the landscape main panel. And if you want to ad adjust the uh, noise type or the shape of the landscape, you can go to the landscape noise panel where all those settings still live. Let's have a look at the erosion function. Uh, you can just simply click on landscape erosion for uh, to use the default settings. And you can see the landscape has been altered and the height map's been altered to show the effect of rain on the landscape and the, uh, the erosion that results from that. The ant landscape add-on that comes with Blender also has that same erosion function, but uh, there was a few problems making that work. It sort of suffers from the same instability that, a, that a cloth or soft body uh, algorithms suffer from. And I think I've sorted a few of them out. There's still some limitations, but the erosion seems to work a lot better now on uh, this add-on. You can adjust some of the settings, uh, you know, to have it more eroded or for uh, the uh, angle of repose type function to fill in some of the gullies. I had the idea it would be nice if the add-on could supply some default materials that use the erosion maps that are generated. Uh, I've 
tried doing that myself. It's a lot of work. So I, I contacted the uh, the author of the Node Custom Builder add-on. Hi Kali is the author's name, and he very generously allowed me to supply um, part of his add-on to uh, to allow the uh, some sample procedural materials to be supplied in text format with the add-on. Uh, it uh, it works really it works really well. We can just go to this preferred material pull down, and at the moment I've supplied a couple of different materials. Uh, I'm not the best procedural material builder in the world, but I've done what I could so far. And for example, we can go alpine, and we have an alpine scene. We could select volcano, and there's a lavery type volcano material, and forested gives you a, a simple forested scene. If we go to the um, shading panel so that you can see what's happening here uh, and have a look down at the maps node group, if we look inside that you can see all this maps node group is doing is loading the uh, texture marks that masks that are generated by the uh, erosion part of the add-on and splitting them off in their various uh, red, green and blue factors and then giving them names on the outside of the block so that you can see what the masks are and if I uh, I have the node wrangler add-on installed so I can just um, control shift my way through the different outputs and you can see the masks that are generated by the add-on I've then just put um, <coughs> a few uh, different node groups in that cascade one across the other for example there's this uh, trees node group uh, and uh, you can adjust the scale and the saturation or you can dive inside and change whatever you like. That cascades through to the uh, marsh node group uh, which picks up the water mask from the add-on and gives some possibility of marshes and lakes. There's the cliffs node group which I can adjust to have um, to be more or less sensitive to the steepness of the landscape and there's a snow node group which um, which picks up the higher areas of the landscape but also the um, to a certain extent tries to flow down the waterways. Of course we went back to the original landscape which just has a resolution of 128 by 128 which is pretty low so we can go back and regenerate the landscape with a higher texture resolution and that will also give us higher erosion mask resolutions. Uh, so let's try say 512 by 512. Uh, you have to be a little careful with this of course because if we double the texture resolution that more than quadruples the time required. So I suggest um, if you're playing around with the erosion and with your own procedural materials you start at a low resolution and then double that and then double that and double that until you know, it gives you an idea of how long each stage will take. I haven't spent any time on optimization, I have to admit. Um, there might be a bit of potential in the future to make this run a little bit faster. And just look at the volcano erosion and you can see the results of the higher resolution uh, uh, in that texture. Well, this introductory video already feels a little bit long, but I, I do feel like I could talk more about um, about the erosion settings, about um, how the textures uh, are saved within the within the Blender file, about the procedural materials and the relationship to the Node Custom Builder add-on, uh, and maybe how to how to use this add-on to produce masks for material uh, for particle generation like trees. So perhaps I might um, do a few more detailed videos separately to this one. Anyway, uh, try it out and let me know what you think and whether this is a good direction for landscape generation within Blender.